Cool layer. We also have something out there called uh, double-sided. Some of you have seen that. You go rent a movie, you have to flip over the disc. That's fairly common. Uh, a single layer double-sided, uh, that's somewhat common. Dual layer double-sided, uh, I, I mean that's a lot. You're getting what, 60, 17 gigabytes on one, one DVD. I mean that's a lot of information. But those are out there and you can get even those in blank DVDs. Uh, but again, those are kind of expensive. Um, and um, what else was I going to say? All right, well, something else popped in. Yes? What are Blu-ray? Oh, that's what I was going to say. Blu-ray and HD DVD. Which is the one they ju that just died? I think it was Blu-ray. that HD. HD died? Okay, HD. They, there were two standards out there that were bumping up the, uh, what DVDs could do. HD DVD and uh, Blu-ray. And uh, the companies, and I forget which companies were doing what, but there were a number of companies backing HD, a number of companies backing Blu-ray, and it was going back and forth, back and forth, and as you said, HD is the one that finally uh, threw in the towel and gave up, and now the only ultra-large DVD out there is the Blu-ray, and what is that whole... Oh, oh, it's Sony that backed that. Well, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I, I didn't, I don't see, didn't know about that specifically. I don't remember. But how? Do you, anybody remember how much a Blu-ray holds? Is it? It's like 25 or 50 gigabytes. It's a huge amount. It's like five or ten times the size of our standard or our current single-sided, single-layer DVD. Okay. Anyway, um, but. Say again? Oh yeah, it's supposed to, it, what it does, if you've ever seen an HD DVD, it's really incredible. The sound is beyond belief, the video is incredible, but you need like a really big TV, a really high definition TV, DV, a TV to see it, to, to really get the full effect, and you need one heck of a sound system. Um, but yes, it it's... I mean, you'd have to go to a really good theater in order to match that sound. Okay. Anyway, all right. One other thing too, I wanted to say, um, in CDs we also have another uh, type of uh, CD. I I don't know that they're out there on DVD. They might be, but our standard CDs are what, like five and a quarter inches, something like that. There's also a CD out there that's like 80 centimeters, something like that. Uh, like about this big. Have any of you seen those? Um, those only hold like about uh, 170, something like that, megabytes. I forget how much. Pardon me? Aren't the discs you're using for this one? Yeah, you're running a little DVD. In there. Oh, that's right. That's a little DVD, but that's a different kind of DVD. That's actually called a um, uh, DVD RAM, something like that. It's a modification of a DVD. So yeah, you're right. I do have a uh, smaller DVD inside there. But anyway, these CDs are like uh, 80 centimeters across, no, 80 millimeters across, 8 centimeters across. That sounds right. Okay, anyway, they're smaller, about this big. And uh, they hold, again, 7,500 megabytes, I forget. There's also one out there that you can buy that's really cute. I've seen those um, that some business people have. And it's the size and roughly the shape of a business card. It's shaped kind of like that. And that holds about 50, 30 or 50 megabytes of data and you can print on them and you can actually hand them out as business cards and they'll read in your CD player. It's the cutest little thing. Um, but you can buy those, all right? Uh, and yes, you were right. My, um, the DVD I have inside there, it's a re-recordable DVD called a DVD RAM. Um, somewhere I have a case, there it is. Yeah, DVD RAM disc, okay? And uh, I guess this holds 2.8 megabytes of uh, total space. Uh, okay, uh, whoever's doing our CD and DVD uh, presentation will go over a lot more into that. Oh, last thing I got to talk about, sorry, one more thing we got to talk about is um, uh, video. Uh, we've got in video, we've got this overriding thing called resolution. I won't even bother with the early days of PCs, but let's just start off with the resolution. An older resolution is 640 lines by, 640 by 480 lines. I have to say it all in one term or I forget. And what that means is, if you have your monitor like this, you've got uh, 640 vertical lines and 480 horizontal lines. 
And where we have an intersection of lines, what's that called? Pixel. Pixel. So you've got a resolution of 640 by 480. 640 lines by 480 lines. We've improved that a lot since then. We've gone up to uh, 800 by 600. Uh, the resolution I think most of your monitors are set for is uh, 1024 by 768. Uh, the one in my office is really high. It's set to like 920 by 1400, something like that. Oops, that's 4,000. 4, by 1400, somebody told me about a resolution they have for their gaming system of like 2560 by 1980. I don't know, something like that. Really high. Yes? Can you use other computers and TVs now? If the TV is set up for it, yes, you can do that. Uh, well, strike that. You can set up just about any computer to any TV, but if you do it that method by just plugging your computer into a television, you're not going to get great resolution because a, a normal television doesn't have higher resolution. For example, when you go out and buy a television, it'll advertise 1024 by 768 resolution, which is about the highest you can get for most standard televisions. In order for you to get a really high resolution like something like this on your television, you have to get a, a specific kind of television that's both TV slash monitor. So you have to be careful if you're saying, oh, I can hook up my computer to television because if you do it that way you're you're going to get limited resolution see LCD is maximum of 1024 by 768 it possibly is even as low as 800 by 600 okay Plasma is the same way. You have to. You would have to get. Some, you're never going to get a huge screen that is going to have ultra high resolution. You, in other words, what you're doing, what you have to do in order to get the highest possible resolution, is get the biggest possible monitor you can get and use it as a television. That's the best way to get your television to act like a monitor. You don't do it that way. You get your monitor to act like a television. See what I'm saying? That way you get the ultra high resolution. All right, so we have all these resolutions, um, but remember, what happens, have any of you changed your resolution going from like 1024 to 768 by? All right, your background changes. What happens to the images on your screen? They get smaller. So what do you need when you do that? Generally, when you start taking the resolution and increasing the re resolution so that you get a much sharper image, you need a much bigger monitor. Like these monitors, they're only 15 inches. If you go and change your resolution to, if, if the system can hold it, to 1920 by 1400, your picture is going to be this big. Well, I mean, it'll take up the whole screen, but the images that were this big are now going to be this big. And you'd need my reading glasses in order to see it. Even you guys would need them. It's hard to see that. In my office, I have now a 28-inch monitor. I just got it. Huge monitor. So I can have this high resolution and still see what's on the screen. So keep that in mind that when you go to the really high resolutions for sharp images, you're going to need a bigger and bigger monitor. All right? Now, Keep in mind also that resolution is both a factor of the monitor, as I was telling this gentleman, that a, the monitor makes the difference, as well as your video card. Now I showed you one of those parts of the video card, but so either your motherboard or the video card you buy must have the resolution capability to show that higher resolution. So it's two parts there, both your monitor and your video card have to has to be able to show have both have to be able to show that higher resolution in order for you to get it okay so the higher the resolution the more expensive your video component is going to be and of course the higher resolution you go probably the bigger your monitor is going to be so if you have an image that is let's say 200 pixels by 200 pixels when you show it at 1024 by 768, it might be this size. When you go to 1920 by 1400, that same 200 by 200 pixel image may be that size. So keep in mind the images do shrink in size. And again, we had uh, those every intersection of a uh, of the lines, vertical and horizontal, is a pixel. Um, we also have one other term in there called pitch. Pitch is the size of the pixel. So if you have, um, if you have a, a smaller pitch monitor, again, you don't see this too much these days, except if you buy a really high-end monitor for doing very high-end work. To give you an idea how that works, if these are your pixels, 
when you're making an arch, you see how you have all this empty space. But in that same arch with smaller pixels or a smaller pitch, that arch looks a lot smoother. So if it ever comes up, the smaller the pitch, the better. Okay? And again, the pitch is the size of the pixel.